Finally, we received the specifications for the first Polaris GPU to hit the markets, but the big question is, in light of both the 1070 and 1080 releases, how much traction will this mid-tier graphics card have? Let's find out. Let's run through the specifications of the card and we'll assess performance as we go along. Perhaps the most noteworthy improvement of the 480 is in its architecture. We are so excited with the 14 nanometer uh, FinFET transition, right? Because it brings much higher performance at much lower power, which is always really, really sweet thing for, for gamers, for workstation, for VR, and all these incredible use cases. We're talking 14 nanometer FinFET transistor design, a substantial jump from the 28 nanometer architecture of AMD's GCN 1.2 technology. Both the R9 380 and 390 utilize this process. We'll be using both of these cards to compare with the RX 480. The 480 will most certainly feature 2,304 stream processors, roughly equivalent to CUDA cores on NVIDIA's side, placing it directly between the R9 380 and 390 totals. This number is calculated by multiplying the number of compute units by the number of stream processors per compute unit, which has been 64 throughout the existence of GCN. While this number for the 480 might seem a bit underwhelming, it's important to take into consideration the aforementioned architectures involved with these chips, as having smaller transistors allows for a much larger amount of them to be packed into a similarly sized die. The standard we can use to estimate graphics card performance without using in-game benchmarks is floating point performance calculated in teraflops. This is essentially the IPC of a GPU, and in the case of the RX 480, AMD's chosen to keep this number basically a secret. So what's inside an RX 480? We have over five teraflops of computing in this beautiful card. However, what we can do is produce a very close estimate to the actual number that we'll see later this month by using the R9 390 and 380 as references. Taking into account the 50% reduction in transistor size, a TDP of 150 watts, half the TDP of the R9 390, and teraflop values of 5.1 and 3.5 respectively, we can safely assume that the RX 480s will likely fall above the 5.1 teraflop performance of the 390. And what do you know? This falls in line with AMD's claim. And beyond the specifications, it is also our most power efficient GPU ever. It's up to 2.8x performance per watt improvement over our prior generation. It's enabled by both the FinFET technology that we work with and also architectural improvements. Amazing, amazing performance improvement. In fact, in my personal opinion, based on the efficiency factor and stream processor count of the card, the RX 480 will likely meet or exceed the rating of the R9 390X at 5.9 teraflops. In terms of memory, we're looking at 8 gigabit per second GDDR5, which is actually quite high for G5 memory, and a 256-bit memory bus. Memory size will likely vary. Some cards will offer 4 gigabytes of VRAM and others 8 gigabytes. It's highly probable that the base reference card will only offer 4 gigabytes and that you'll have to pay a premium of sorts for the 8 gigabyte version. VR is slowly becoming mainstream and AMD is not backing down. So we wanted to deliver a high performance, low cost, low power solution to democratize VR, which can make VR possible for anyone who wants it. It can drive VR into retail. It can hit system price points, PC price points that can be everywhere in retail. And it can grow the market to over 100 million consumers. And also drive VR application development, content development in a large scale fashion. They're claiming $500 VR performance from the RX 480, which is a bold claim, and it would actually put it in the same category as an R9 Nano. I remain skeptical of this claim, just as I did for Nvidia's claim of the 1070's VR performance and just performance in general. I don't really take what companies say about their own cards at face value, and I honestly don't believe that you should either. I invite you to check out our reviews of these cards once they're released before formulating adamant opinions on any of these cards pre-debut. Finally, price. How much will this budget powerhouse cost? Well, according to AMD, only 199 bucks, so about the same price as a current R9 384 GB graphics card. However, it does appear that the RX 480 will perform about 50% better than its 380 counterpart, making it quite the bargain for the red team. So that brings to conclusion my Polaris unveil today, and Polaris architecture is a giant, giant step forward for PC gaming and VR, and what um, we have revealed to you today is its capability in, uh, in VR, 
and its, uh, and its price points. You will see a lot more information about the entire Polaris GPU stack coming out in the next, over the next few weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. And also I want to thank all of the engineers who worked on Polaris tirelessly over the last two years to get us to this day. Thank you. Expect to hear more from AMD in the coming weeks and stay tuned for the release of the RX 480 June 29th. If you like the content of this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down. Well, you know, if you feel the complete opposite, be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already and stay tuned for a future PC build here on the channel. I believe this will be our 13th. We're on a roll, folks. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.